Okay, so how is everyone today? Good. Good? Okay, so any questions about the assignments we did last Thursday? They were pretty straightforward as far as like conceptually. Mechanically, they were a little involved, right? Figuring out, oh, okay, well, this is how you get MATLAB started, and this is how you get GitHub going, and files off the internet and back onto the internet. So the, the whole purpose of last week was, was getting that technical workflow down, because that's how we're going to exchange files the whole semester. Any questions about any of that? <coughs> Okay, so then the projector is working now. That's nice. So then, as as a reminder, I'm going to write the notes on these sheets, and I'll I'll scan these these sheets, and they'll be available as PDF. And I'm also recording with my camera, and I'll post that on the internet as well. So so don't say anything you don't want YouTube to hear. Not not that it's all that popular, and actually. <coughs> Actually, when, if you ask a question, I'll have to repeat it because the microphone really only picks up a voice if it's only about <laughs> four feet away from it. So if you're over there, it's, I'll have to repeat your question. Okay, so any questions about any of that? Okay, so what's today? The 17th. 17th. So last time we were, yes? How do we have MATLAB onto like our laptops? I need to send you, I need to send you that message. I'm writing this in my file system here. It's very high tech. Yep. <laughs> so, um, I'll, I'll send a message, but here's the, here's the long and the short of it. If you if you go to the UTD homepage and and search for MATLAB, then you'll among the search results is a is a OIT Office of Information Technology MATLAB webpage about how to install it. So MATLAB is a very expensive piece of software. Yes, I'm trying to get it for free. So as a result of you being an active student, you have right to use the UTD student license. So in the end, this is the process, is you, you download the enormous MATLAB installation, <laughs> and, you, you, and then while that's going on, you follow the instructions on the OIT webpage, and you, send, you end up sending someone an email saying, I want to use it. And then they, they make a little mark in a database, and then say, here's the information you need to use it. And then when you, when you actually get MATLAB installed, you say, you use that information. And every time you use it, MATLAB checks. Are you still a current student? But it is possible. And you don't have to pay anything besides what you're already paying <laughs> for UTD. Other questions? OK. <clears throat> uh, so last time, we were talking about arithmetic operations. OK, so let's review that. Just very briefly. So specifically, we said, okay, assuming addition, assuming addition for, a mo for the moment, I'm going to write in two columns. So if you want it to look just like mine, understand I'm going to write in two columns. Okay, assuming addition is true, multiplication, multiplication, by n in the naturals. So this, that symbol, since y'all are math majors, I feel free to use this kind of thing. That, that is just a letter n. That's, that set is the naturals. And then that thing in the middle means is an element of, or is a member of, or is, is inside of. Multiplication by natural is repeated addition. Is repeated addition. 
So, <clears throat> for example, if we have some, some real x, then 2x, 2x, well that means make two copies of x and then combine them with addition, x plus x. And then 3x, that means make three copies of x and combine them with addition. And 4x means make four copies of x and combine them with addition, etc. Now, if I left myself some vertical space, so I'll take that now. So in that case, what is 1x? It's just you make one copy of x and then I suppose do nothing with it. And then here's a number which isn't natural, at least according to some definitions, the MATLAB definition anyway. <laughs> so if what I'm, what I'm referring to is that depending on what mathematician or computer scientist you're talking to, the naturals either do contain zero or do not. So when it, whenever you're talking to one, you need to carefully figure out whether or not. For our purposes, MATLAB does more or less does not consider zero to be natural. Okay, the, the smallest natural for MATLAB is one. Okay, <clears throat> so, so to make this work, if 2x means two copies of x, add them up, 3x means three copies of x, add them up, then what does zero x mean? It's got to be zero, right? It's got to be zero. So the way we make this right, the, the way we make this work, is notice that I left myself some horizontal space, right? And that the horizontal space on either side of the equal is not symmetric, which is not my style. So anytime you see me doing that, you can, you, that's a <laughs> real strong foreshadowing. Okay, what really goes here is a zero plus zero plus zero plus zero plus and zero. And why zero? Why is zero special? Because it doesn't affect addition. Okay, and there's a specific, I, I do agree with that, and there's a specific name I'm fishing for that starts with I. Identity. 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 Right, because this zero is the identity. Identity of addition. The identity of addition. Okay, now for the right column. And of course, by n here, I mean if you take this down to its logical conclusion, nx means you start with the additive identity, 0. Then you make n copies of x. and you combine them all together with addition. Okay, so, so how often does x appear right here? N times. N times, right? Which is why this is called n times x. That's the reason for that language. Okay, so multiplication is repeated addition, exponentiation, Exponentiation by natural n is by analogy what? Repeated multiplication. Repeated multiplication. Multiplication. Okay, so starting here again, so x squared, that's x with exponent 2, well that means, that means make two copies of x and combine them, not with addition, with what? With multiplication, good. So then x to 3, that means three copies of x, com combine all of them with multiplication, x to 4, means make four copies of x and combine all of them with multiplication. Okay, no real surprises, I think. Uh, x to 1, 
that means just x. And then, okay, well, what is x to 0 then? It's got to be 1. It's got to be 1 for, for one reason, is that that's what you remember Mrs. Harris in seventh grade told you, right? <laughs> right? Miss Harris wouldn't lie to you. <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> so, but, okay. But that's not a reason enough for us to conclude that it must be 1. Why must, why must this be 1? One's the identity of multiplication. That's the reason. 1 is the, is the multiplicative identity. So this is 1, and what really goes here is that you've got a 1 times all of that, 1 times all that, 1 times all that, 1 times all that. Okay, and then, then this continues down to here, like so, x to n <coughs> means the multiplicative identity, and then you make n copies of x, and you combine them all together with product. Okay, so any question about these definitions or why they are the way they are? Yes? Or, this is a different question, but um, why is x superscript n called x to the power of n? You know, that's a good, you, I, I think you're asking like, this one is called n times x, and it's because this, it's because x a, appears n times. And I think you may be saying, is there some other clever wordplay and, and historical reason for this to be called this? And the answer is, I don't, if there is, I don't know it. And that kind of leads me to believe that there's not one, because it's really my style to look up at all of those kinds of things. <laughs> so I don't know, but I'll renew my search, because <laughs> I would like to know too. OK. <clears throat> so now, now, what we want to do is this is a MATLAB class. Okay. So now we need to, we need to couch this stuff as a as a MATLAB question. Okay, so everybody's okay with the definitions. Is it showing up good on the screen? Yeah. Okay. So here's a MATLAB exercise. So write a function and by that I mean MATLAB function. So write a MATLAB function. <coughs> which takes one input. So it has one input. X, one output. Y. And the function has name multiply by 5 separated by underscores because you can't have spaces in a function name <clears throat> and what it is is I want you to take an input x and then output 5 times x but you're not allowed to use the multiplication operator. And MATLAB has a multiplication operator. <laughs> it has one. So, but, but for the purposes of this exercise, it's just forbidden for you to use. OK. <clears throat> so <clears throat> you'll recall that every MATLAB, at least if you, did the, if you did and understood last week's homework assignments, every MATLAB function if this function is, is named mult, mult by 5 in this way, then where must this function be located? The file name mult by 5. Almost. You're, you're right on top of it, mult by 5 dot m. Dot m, right? Okay. So we've got to make, we've got to make a file named mult by 5 dot m, and then now we're going to consider its contents. Okay. 
<clears throat> so this is the the function the file mult by 5.m Okay, so now I'm going to start putting the, the code in the file. And I'm going to have to do it right the first time because I'm going to write it in pen. Living dangerously. So, so when you want to indicate that, that the contents of a file contain a function, what's the very first thing that goes in the file? The word function. So it's function. Which is, which is a keyword, so I'm writing it in red. And then now the next thing that, that you write is the list of all the outputs. So how many outputs are there? One. Just one, and its name is Y, so we write Y. And then you write equal, and then what comes next? Mult by five. Yeah, the name of the function, so mult. by 5 and then the list of arguments. So how many arguments? One Just one. X. Its name is X. Okay. So we want to multiply by 5. We, we, want, we want the output Y to be X multiplied by 5. Okay. So how are we going to do it? And again, you're not allowed to use the multiplication operator. What do you think? Yeah, that's uh, well, sp sp strictly speaking, it's not necessary. Okay, but but since we're we're starting out easy, eventually the the fact that zero is the identity of addition will will come into play. Okay, so this can be done pretty straightforwardly. You say y is equal to x plus x plus x plus x plus x. Okay, so there's five of them. So that's 5x. Okay, and <clears throat> We'll need to terminate this statement with a semicolon. By the way, did anyone figure out what does what is not terminating a statement with a semi semicolon? What is what is the effect in MATLAB of this semicolon? End the line. Not really. It does something. Were you able to figure it out last week? So, if you don't, it's not an error. Uh, if you leave the semicolon off of a line, then MATLAB will print whatever it evaluated on that line. Yes, and so if you put a semicolon at the end of a line, then whatever MATLAB just computed on that line, it will not print. It will not print that. Okay, so now this, this file is almost complete. One more thing is necessary end, which is also a keyword, so I'm switching to red. <coughs> Beautiful. Any question about, about this? Yes? Uh, strictly speaking, no. Uh, th but there's, we'll, we'll get to that. For now, we'll just stick with the rule, yes. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, so now, I'm not, I'm not going to, to ask you to do it here and now, but you can imagine, what, what if I said, okay, now do the exact same thing, but I want it to be multiplied by seven. 
what, what would you do? <laughs> right. You have to change that to, you know, you'd have to give it a different name, and then you'd do seven X's, right? Okay, so we're not, we're not really going to do that. I think it's obvious enough. Okay. <clears throat> what about, <clears throat> what about, uh, if I said, okay, since this is just slightly interesting, <clears throat> now your allowed negation, your has a apostrophe before that. You're allowed negation, which is to say you're allowed to, ne to negate a number. So that's a, that's a, that's, um, you know, it's a form of multiplication, right? You multiply by negative one. But that's the only thing you're allowed. That's the only thing you're allowed. You're allowed negation, and I want you to make a function uh, called multiply by negative uh, 3, which otherwise is the, is the same as above. Okay, meaning it takes one input x, it produces one output y, and it does what you, what you think it does, right? It's supposed to multiply by negative 3. Okay. So the way, we, the way we addressed the first question is, is we did it just like we did on the first page. We said, okay, I'll type x five times and put four pluses in between all of them. Okay, and notably, you're not allowed subtraction. You can't use subtraction. That's against the rules. <laughs> You're allowed to use addition and negation. So what can we do? And let's make it even more stringent. Let's make it even more stringent and say that you're allowed to use negation exactly once. What do you think? You have the expression x plus x plus x and that whole expression negated. Okay. Okay. I like that. What do you think? Um, like have it create an extra variable z set z equal to negative x and then y equals c plus c plus c plus c. Okay, I like that. Let's write them both down. Okay, so here's, here's one implementation of this function. So I'll write them down in the order I heard them. So function y equal mult mult by what was it negative three I'm just I just make it up as I go along negative three um, <clears throat> so the first suggestion I heard it w works and satisfies the constraints there's exactly one negation So is there any question about what's written here? Yes? Uh, you said that we are not allowed to use subtraction, but we are allowed to use negation. Syntactic, uh, syntactically, in the math lab, what is the difference between subtraction and negation? So it's the same, it's the same synta syntactic difference in arithmetic, and that, is that, and that is that subtraction is really a function. It's actually a function that contains two arguments a left argument and it's called the, the left and the right argument. So it's called so subtraction is is called a binary operation. Whereas negation is a unary operation, which means that it accepts exactly one argument. So so what's happening here is that you can think of this symbol as being a function that takes exactly one thing. 
that thing. So like, for example, unary, the, the binary subtraction of 5 comma 3, well, in, in the grade school way, you'd say, well, that's 5 minus 3. That's 2. Whereas the unary negation of 7 is negative 7. Other questions? Yes? Uh, could we put a 0 before the uh, minus sign? No, and why not? Because then that becomes subtraction. Because that would be a subtraction. Right? Which is to say, I believe what you're asking is, what if I was to put a 0 here? Yeah, so that, that would be against the rules because then it wouldn't be a, a unary negation. It'd be a, it'd be a binary subtraction. So Matt, it would cause Matt to interpret it differently. Yes. Yes? Are you only allowed to input like natural numbers or if you add negative numbers, like what happens? Well, according to our definitions, the definitions on these pages, the only thing that's necessary about x in this column is that x is a real number. That's it. So if x was negative pi, all this is still just as true. Okay. The only thing that's required here, uh, here x can be anything. Here, what needs to be true about x? Not 0, right? Because remember, Mrs. Harris told us that 0 to 0 is not defined. We'll have to think about why that is <coughs> some, t some other time. Okay, other questions about this one? Yes? Uh, are you waiting for us to tell you that you didn't leave the file? Well, I, I do like that, I, and I do agree. But what I was going to do is I was going to make another one right here, an alternative implementation. But yes, I do agree that this, what would need to be the name of the file that contains this function? Dot .m, okay, blah, blah. Okay. <coughs> So the alternative implementation, and, and not the, as in the only, other, only one other possibility, just an alternative, function y is equal to mult by three of x. So the second alternative that I heard was to make a new variable. To make a new variable. So uh, something like this to say, okay, um, I'll write c is equal to negative, y, uh, negative x, like so. So now I've used up my one negation, my one unary negation. Now, how do I proceed to the answer from here? Very good. Y is C plus C plus C. <clears throat> Two alternatives, both legitimate. Any question about this? Yes? Um, so is there not any like, um, indicator or anything that you need to put in front of C to establish that it's a new variable? No. So in other, so do you have prior programming experience? Java. Java, OK. So then that's the reason, I suspect that's the reason why you're asking. OK, so in other programming languages, programming la other, some other programming languages have something called explicit typing, which is where when a new variable is introduced, you have to say, I'm talking about this kind of variable. MATLAB has no such explicit typing. And, it, and besides not being explicitly typed, since you have prior programming experience, MATLAB is also not strongly typed either. Yes? Can it handle symbolic input like mathematical Yes, and we will get to that, but not today. Which, so for those of you wondering what is being asked, is that you know how in pre-calculus, your instructor can give you, say, a quadratic, and your instruction is to factor this quadratic, to take it from, from ax squared plus bx plus c into some 
product of linear factors. Can MATLAB do that? Yes, it can. <coughs> okay, good. So any question about this? Yes? Um, if you were to type in something like 3 plus 4i into x, would that work? Or would it filter it out because it's like not really a... Would it understand that it's a complex number without having you specifically saying that's complex? MATLAB has a notion of complex numbers. But for, for now, for now, we're, we're not worried about whether, we're, we're <laughs> the only thing that we're assuming is that whoever's calling the function is not an adversary but a friend. And, <laughs> and, and x is in, in fact going to be a real number and not a banana or something totally unexpected. Okay? But, but there will come a time when when your functions will have to assume that the caller is an adversary and you'll need to check and make sure that nothing weird was passed in. Yes? Uh, can MATLAB handle re reverse Polish notation? Uh, no. No, it uses infix notation. Okay. So now, now, same problem, and you're still only allowed to use addition and you're not allowed to use anything you're not allowed to use anything that I haven't explicitly talked about those of you who have prior programming experience I want you to make a function <coughs> in the same vein as before so make a MATLAB function which multiplies by Um, 64. Okay, yeah? You just do y equals x plus x plus x and you sit there and copy paste it 64 times? You, you, in principle, you could. In principle, you could. You could just make 64 copies of x and put 63 pluses in between all of them. That would work. But, but, now I'm going to say that you're only allowed to use you have to use less than 10. What? Yes? Uh, could you create a for loop? I, I don't even know what a for loop is. Yes? Um, you could use like a series of new variables. You could say like, um, basically work it out so it's kind of like exponentiating it. So okay. So say c equals x plus x plus x plus x, and then like uh, d equals c plus c plus c until you get to the point where you're like, Okay. Okay, I think you've got a good idea. Was, was someone, did someone else have a similar idea? We've got to get it done. The, the rule now is going to be we've got to get it done in less than 10 pluses. Okay, so do, do you observe that if you were to do it sort of in the naive way that we were doing on the previous pages, it would take, it would take 63 additions. Okay, but, but you're allowed to use at most 10. Okay, okay. Just two at a time, like y equals x plus x, z equals y plus y, and go so forth like that. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> so uh, if we were if we wanted to do this sort of, I'm going to do this a little bit in in standard like the way you might write this in a math class. Okay, so I'm going to write it like like we would in a math class, and then like MATLAB. Okay, so we could say well x zero. That's, um, or x, x1 would be better. x1 is whatever x is. And what I'll say is, okay, x2, x2, well, that's x1 plus x1. And if you're keeping track of things, what is that? That's 2x. Right, that's 2x. And then I'll say x3, I'll say that's x2 plus x2. And how, mu how much x is that? 4x. That's 4x's, right? Yeah, x4. What do you think I'm going to say is the right-hand side of this? x3 plus x3. Very good. x3 plus x3. So this is 1x 
this is 2x, 4x, 8x. This one is 16x. <clears throat> That's 32x. <clears throat> okay, so how many additions did I use? Six, Six of them. Ah, a little surprising, huh? Made it all the way to 64 using only six additions. Interesting. So, so, I could say, well, what if I wanted you to multiply by, say, 1,024? How many additions would that take? It would take on the order of 10, right near 10. I have to think about it. It would take, it might take nine. It depends. I, I can't remember if I'm off by one, but 1,024 is two to exponent 10. Okay, so then I could ask you like, okay, well, what if I wanted you to do, uh, you know, 512x? Well, then you could just keep repeating this doubling procedure. So do you see how, okay, doubling it, that gets the job done quite quick. So generally speaking, generally speaking, every line that you move down, every, every line that you move down, you get... Uh, you, you, you double the current size. You double the current size of your thing, yes? This only works if you want a power of two. Ah, we're going to address whether or not we can make it work otherwise in a few minutes. But yes, 64 is a power of two, so, it, so it, in a sense it, it works out just right when we get here, right? because that one is 64x. Okay, so then let's, let's uh, write a MATLAB function that does this. <clears throat> so malt oops <clears throat> malt by sixty four <clears throat> dot m How do we signify to MATLAB that this file that we're writing contains a function, function. with the keyword function? <coughs> so function y <coughs> is equal to, um, what was it? 64. Yeah, mult by 64. Mult. by 64 dot, uh, it contains one argument. Okay. <clears throat> and then I'll make, I'll make two implementations of this function. One of them is going to be just a straight transliteration of this one. Okay, so then now MATLAB, when you're typing in MATLAB, MATLAB doesn't have subscripts. So I'm just gonna call the variables x1, x2, where, which is literally an x and then a 1, and then an x and then a 2, yes? Is x underscore 1 a valid name for a variable? It is. Okay. <clears throat> but it doesn't have any bearing on subscriptness. <clears throat> Sub subscriptness. I guess that's a word. Okay, so <clears throat> x1, so x1 is x semicolon x2 is x1 plus x1 semicolon and then I'm just going to do dot 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 because I think you understand what I mean so x7 is <coughs> x6 plus x6 uh, and in fact, we would need to do one more. What, what, what one more thing would we need to do to make this function work? Yeah, we'd have to name y. 
Y is the only thing that's leaving this function. All those other things that are in there aren't leaving. Okay. <coughs> Any question about, yes? Um, so putting a number next to a variable does not just cause MATLAB to try and multiply them together? It does not. So in, in math, that is to say, on the page when we're writing our math stuff, okay, writing this, if we had a variable named x, then 7x, that is to say juxtaposing a number and a symbol, means it is a shorthand notation for this. Okay, similarly, in math, this also means the same thing, though it's a little bit weird because usually people tend to write the numbers in front, but there's nothing, nothing about the rules which require that. <clears throat> Whereas, so multiplication is such a common operation that it, it's the operation without a name, in a sense. Like, we're just going, if, if I don't name the operation, it's understood to be multiplication. When you juxtapose two things, and neither one of them is a function, then it's understood to be multiplication. Okay. MATLAB, you're not allowed to omit anything. If you, with this, as far as MATLAB is concerned, x7, that's a variable name. If you write 7x, that's a syntax error. <laughs> you, you, you can't name a variable starting with a number in MATLAB. Okay. So now I'm going to write a different one. I'm going to write another function, another implementation of the same function right over here. So this, this other implementation would also get the job done. But any question about what's written here? So now I'm going to get the job done in a slightly different way. <clears throat> And this is where, this is one place where people who only have math training and no computer science training get a little bit disturbed, maybe. So mult by 64. Okay. So I'm going to say, y is x. I'm going to start out by saying y is x. And now I'm going to say that y is y plus y. Now for math people, this is disturbing. Okay, already, already this is disturbing. <laughs> okay. So this, this thing that I've written here is a piece of MATLAB syntax and looks deceptively like a piece of math syntax. It looks like an equation in the math sense. Now, if this was, if this was an equation in the math sense, if it, if, it, if, it, if it were, then this equation would have only one solution. Y is zero. Okay. But what you need to understand is that this is not an equation. It's not. It's not an equation in the math sense. This syntax means the following. MATLAB inter interprets it in the following way. It's saying that. It says, okay, this is an assignment. I'm going to evaluate the right-hand side. So that means I'm going to look up the present value of y. What is the present value of y? X. What, it's x, whatever x was passed in. Then I'm going to do x plus x, and I'm going to save that in a temporary location. So now I have the value of y plus y. And where did you want me to store that? Into y. Into y. So you want me to, you want me to replace the present value of y with this. So what happens is, is this assigns a new value to y. It's not an equation. It's not an equation. And for those, and for those of you that this is upsetting, well, it's just, that's just the way it is. Okay. So it, it looks like a math equation. It is not. It is, in fact, an assignment. And I can't even express to you the number of 
sadnesses and confusions that math and computer, computer science people have had with each other over the confusion and imprecision of the language between an equation and an assignment. This is, this is the syntax for assignment. MATLAB has a completely different syntax for equation that we haven't even talked about yet and won't talk about for some, some time, but we will. Okay, so then y is y plus y. What's the next thing I'm going to write? Y equals y plus y. Y is y plus y. Y is y plus y. Y is y plus y. Four. Y is y plus y. Y is y plus y. Now it sort of looks like... <laughs> sort of looks like I went for the copy paste function and then sort of you know held down control hold down the paste key for too long right that's kind of what it looks like but do you understand the mechanic of what's happening is that what happens is is that MATLAB executes this function in linear order left to right top to bottom okay it gets to this line and it says Consider the placeholder for y, copy over the current value of x to y. Then it says, okay, now evaluate the current value, y plus y, and store it in the, the position y. So y's value is doubled as a result of this line. And then it's doubled again, and then it's doubled again, and again and again and again. And did I do it the correct number of times? Yes. Interesting. So let's consider. Let's consider. So this this implementation has the nice property, has, has, has two nice properties. One nice property is that it is, in a sense, a direct transliteration of this math that we wrote up here. It's like the correspondence is as obvious as it could be, I think. Okay. It also has the nice property that math when we're writing math on a page, math on a page has a property called single static assignment, which is to say that in a math problem, as soon as you give a value to a variable, that is it for the rest of the exercise. You can say something like, let x be 73. Then x is 73 for all time in this problem. We don't need to worry about it sneaking off and becoming 74. It's not going to happen. So MATLAB does not have the property of single static assignment, which is one reason why, it would, why, when you look at this, it may look a little bit strange, because the value of y is changing as the function is executing. It's changing. So now, can someone give me a reason why, <laughs> from, a matter, from a point of view of execution, we may prefer this one over that one, yeah? This one uses less memory, yeah? Uh, if you wanted to construct a loop using y equals y plus y would make the loop run much better than picking and to set separate variables for everything. Okay, I agree with that, but I'm going to have to insist that I'm not even really sure what a loop is. <laughs> okay. So this one, this one uses uh, seven, seven different variables. Right? They all have to be, in a sense, recorded. We, we, record down, we record the value of x1, and then x1 doesn't change for the rest of time, but we still store it. And then we, then we record the value of x2, and it, it doesn't change for the rest of time, but we still have to store it. So this one stores a whole bunch of intermediate variables that in the end are not used. Whereas this one, this one has exactly, has no intermediate variables, it just has y and why is used over and over and over again. Did you have a question or comment? Yeah, just a comment. But like, let's say it was multiplied by 96. If we use the left one, we could then like just have the last line be y equals x7 plus x6. Okay, I like that. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. But for now, for now, um, is this okay? Okay, good. <clears throat> so, even if I was to give you some seemingly very large number. You could accomplish, you could accomplish this, this task 
without the aid of any loops, you prior programming people. Even if I said, write a function that multiplies by 4096, it would, it would really look almost just like this because 4096 is also a power of 2. It's like 2 to 14 or something like that. So you'd have to have, you know, more lines, but not that many more. Okay, good. So any question about this? <clears throat> yeah? So on the right, where you're just basically renaming Y over and over and over again? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, not renaming it. Its name is always Y. Its value is what's changing. Why doesn't it store, like, on the left, <laughs> mm -hmm. X is an input, which is a number, and it assigns it to a variable, and then it uses those variables. When it goes to the third for X3, why doesn't it get rid of X1? Ah. So, so um, well, I'll give, you, I'll give you a partial answer. So a, 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 an optimizing compiler would be able to observe that X1 is no longer used and intelligent, intelligent programming languages and environments are able to optimize away x1. And an intelligent programming language like, for example, um, say, Scheme or Prolog or probably even C could turn this into that, and it would. But MATLAB isn't. <laughs> it's just not intelligent. <laughs> it's not intelligent because that's not that's not the, the niche market of MATLAB. It does something else entirely. Yes? Um, is there a, a, a shorthand way of like um, y plus equals y in MATLAB? There is, but I'm not talking about it yet. Right now we're, I'm trying to ease into, ease into it. I know that many of you have programming language experience. That's fine. I, I'll, I promise once I get everyone to a, a good level, then we'll start galloping more quickly. Right now, I'm just trying to ease into it. Okay, <clears throat> I lost my train of thought. So, so I'm going to give you an exercise that's something like molt by some power of two, and it's going to be quite similar to this. No loops. Okay, <clears throat> and so. Some of you rightly noted and even gave strategies for, well, what if I say multiply by something that's not a power of two? Then what? I guess we're just totally hosed. <laughs> and, what, and, what if, and, and moreover, what if it's a big number, like, like a thousand? You know, multiply by a thousand using only addition. And you're only allowed to use 20 pluses. Right, so you can't sit there and copy paste a whole bunch of whole bunch of them. So how how can we do it? Okay, so then the strategy is, like you said, what do you what do you think? Uh, yeah. Do this with the x one, x two, and you use that that strategy. Mm -hmm. And you go all the way up to the power of two that the power of two that is the greatest power of two that is less than the number you want to multiply. Okay. And then I don't know how to explain it besides saying the binary representation. Okay. And so let's do it for a few exam examples, and I think it'll become clear. Yes. Would you do a like y equals y plus y plus y plus y and do that ten times, so it almost becomes a power of ten, and then do it again. That way, it becomes a power of ten again and hits the thousand. That'd be nice. So, so if the answer was multiply by a thousand, did you did you hear what he said? He said, okay, say y is y plus y plus y plus y ten times, so that now you've now now you have ten ten y. Okay, and then do it again. If if you did that again, what would you have? Hundred y, and if you did it one more time, a thousand. You'd have a thousand y. So would that be within the budget of of the pluses? It'd be cl it'd be close, it'd be close. So that might so that might work, al almost. So I like that. Okay, let's start with a smaller number. <clears throat> okay, let's do um, 
So the same exact setup, the same exact setup, except now we're going to do multiply by um, some number that's not a power of 2. How about 36? Okay. So let's sort of do it in the, in the math way first. Okay. <coughs> So if the, if, the, if the function to multiply, if, if the number to multiply by is x, so same as before. So then we could say, okay, x1, well, that's x. Okay, and then x2, we say that's x1 plus x1. Okay, and then over here I'm going to write just a little bit of bookkeeping so I can pay attention. So this would be 1x, this one would be 2x, right? And then x3, that's x2 plus x2. How much would that be? That would be 4x. And then x4, that would be x3 plus x3. So that would be 8x, and then x5, x4 plus x4, that would be 16x, and then x6, that would be x5 uh, plus x5, and that would be 32x. Okay, so what I'd like for you to observe, as, as he was trying to describe, now, should we double once more? No. no. No, we shouldn't double once more. Why not? Because we'd be over. Yeah, we'd be we'd be we'd overshoot the target. The target is 36. The target is 36. Now, here's the fundamental realization that you need to make. We want we, we're now in a sense one less than what we need. But because of the way we've computed things, because of the way we've computed things, we have all the bits that we need. We have all of them. Because, because isn't, isn't 36x, 32x plus 4x? Yes? So would x never equal x6 plus x3? Yeah. And so that would be 36x. And so how many, well, so we used six pluses to get that done. We used six of them. Okay. So you could imagine, well, what if I, what if I said, let's, uh, let's do it for, let's think of another number. How about 101? Let's do it for 101. Okay, so is everybody okay with this? Because I want to go to a new page. This is okay? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do one more of these quickly. So now the same problem, but with 101. So now I'm going to do this quick. So x1 is x, that's 1x. x2 is x1 plus x1, 2x. x3 is x2 plus x2, 4x. x4 is x3 plus x3. 8x, x5 is uh, x4 plus x4, 16x, x6 is x5 plus x5, 32 of them now, Okay, so I got down to I got down to x7, which gives me 64 x's. And the point is, what we want, what we want is 101 x's. Okay, and there's no point in doubling further, because doubling f further would overshoot our goal. But because of the way that we've performed this computation, the manner in which we perform this computation, it's now possible for us to answer the question. So what's the question? How, how do we answer it? 
Yeah? Um, x8 plus x7 plus x6 plus x3 plus x1. Okay. So x7, that would give us 64 of them. And then, and then plus x6, that would be 64 uh, plus 32, that's 96. And then x3, because that's 4, that's 100. And then x1. So how many did we get away with? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Seven, eight, nine. We were able to do it in nine editions. So now here's an interesting question. <clears throat> here's an interesting question. Is that given given a number like 101, so what we're doing, what we're doing is we're 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 always doubling the answer. So we're able to do it with, with doubling alone, we're able to do it with nine pluses. Now what if what if well, this is not something that we're going to study in our class, but I just want to throw the question out, is to say, what if some of the time you could double and some of the time you could triple? So like if we started out with one triple, then we'd have a 3x. Then we could start doubling 3x's, then we'd have 6's and 12's and 24's floating around. Okay? And if, we d if, we, if, if once we did a, a 5 lit, I don't know what the right word is, but we had a 5x, then we could start doubling those, then we'd have 5, 10, 20, all those. Now the question is, the question is, is what is the shortest number of pluses that if, if you use any scheme whatsoever that you can get to get to 101? And I don't know what the answer is off the top of my head, but I, I am think, I'm fairly sure that it's less than nine if you're allowed to do things besides doubling. So if maybe there's some clever way you could insert a a triple in there and then start doubling that triple or tripling a double or or somehow what is the what is the absolute minimum number of pluses that you can use to get here it's an interesting question now asymptotically this is as good as it gets which is to say that if if we wanted to multiply by some very big number like millions and billions or something and we were forced to do it in this way then then, asymptotically speaking, this is as good as it gets. Absolutely speaking, if you're allowed to use doubles and triples and quintuples and everything else, then there's some ways that are better than others. Okay, and this, this thought about, well, how can I double or sometimes quintuple and things like this, this is the basis, among other things, of the fast Fourier transform on inputs of size that are not powers of two. So those of you who are applied mathematicians, this will become important to you if you end up writing any software. So any question about this? Yes? In terms of like memory and the amount of time that you take, mm -hmm. what's the difference between a plus and another variable? That's a very good question. And the answer is, I don't know. But it's a good question. Okay, so another one of the exercises I'm going to give you is I'm going to, I'm going to, besides giving you a multiply by a power of two, like, like this one, I won't give you 64, <laughs> I'll give you something else. I'm also going to give you a multiply by some other number that's not a power of two. Okay, and you're not allowed to use loops, and you'll only be allowed to use a maximum number of additions. So you have to, by hand, okay, work it out and just use the doubling scheme like I have. So if I give you some weird number like 173, it's, it's always going to be 173. So you can work it out on paper and say, OK, this is what it looks like. So if it was 173, we would have done one more double to get 128. And then we would have added 32 and some other things that I can't do in my head. Okay, But you could do it on paper. So any question about this? And notably speaking, it's a lot less than 172 multiple, uh, additions. Another thing I'd like to point out is that this exact, exact same argument applies exactly the same way to exponentiation. So what if I gave you an x and I said, well, I want you to compute x to power 64. What would you do?
Right. You square it, square it again, square it again, square it again, square it again, square it again. And then you're there. Okay, so then to be clear, Exponentiate, exponentiate to power, say, um, 16. No, we need a bigger number. How about 32? Otherwise, it's not so obvious. So, so on the one hand, on the one hand, we could do x times x times x times x times x times x, 32 of them. You could do that. Okay, but let's not do that. Instead, let's be a little more clever in the same way as before. Except now the only difference is we're using a different operation. So x1, well, that's x. x2, oops. x2 is x1 and multiplied by x1. And so it's exactly the same, except instead of writing the plus, I'm writing a dot. Uh, x3, well, that's x2 times x2. x4, x3 times x3. And x5, x4 times x4. Let's make sure I stop in the right spot. So this one would be x to 1, this one would be x to 2, this one would be x to 4, this one x to 8. Oh, need to go one more. <coughs> this one would be x to 2, 4, 8, uh, 16. Okay, and now the question is, is how do you get this done in MATLAB? Okay. Well, <clears throat> in MATLAB, uh, to, give it, to give it some nice name, uh, I guess I'll call it, it'll be clear in the instructions, exp to 32. Something like this, dot m. come up, try to come up with a better name than that. Okay, <clears throat> so function <clears throat> y is exp to 32 of x. Okay, what do you think? Why is, y is x? And then what? Y equals y times y. Okay. And that raises just one question, and that is what is the symbol which represents multiplication for MATLAB? The asterisk. Asterisk. The one that it's shift uh, six or seven? I can't remember. My finger knows. <laughs> shift and then one of the numbers on the top row. So that that is the symbol that represents multiplication for MATLAB. And then now we need to do this how many times? One, two, three, four, five times. And I, I'd like to point out that these are exactly <laughs> the same except for that one operation. And this would work fine because 32 is fixed in this implementation. But what if, you know, what if I gave you some other thing? I said, okay, do x exponentiate and make the exponent 37. The y trick wouldn't work. Yeah, then this then this trick of of having no intermediate variables wouldn't work. Now another question is that you that 
probably not going to consider, but like in uh, where did it go? Ah. Like this one. So notice, in the end, in the end, to get to the bottom uh, for x8, we just really needed x7, x6, x x3, and x1. So in particular, we didn't need 5 or 4 or 2. So those weren't even, in a sense, necessary. You might wonder, well, how could I get rid of them? It's not really important for our class. Okay, but you might imagine you're trying to perform this computation in the smallest possible space. Okay, then... Strictly speaking, after you've done this, x2, you actually don't need it anymore in the end. Interesting. So beyond that line, it's not needed or used. Okay. Hmm. So any question about, about this? So for those of you who do have prior ex programming experience, do I agree that this could be done quite rapidly? using loops? Of course I do. Are you allowed to use loops on the exercises corresponding to this lecture? No. Of course you're not. Okay. Are we going to do exercises just like this next week that do use loops? Yes. Of course we are. Okay, but that's not the point. Okay. L loops, not loops. You knowing loops is not the point. Okay, getting getting accustomed to this is the point. So one of the exercises we'll do next week is when we when we familiarize ourselves with loops then i want you to do, i want you to do this problem multiply x by some large natural number using the minimum number of additions possible okay but now it's not going to be a fixed one it's going to be it's going to be another variable All right, so now instead of passing just x into you into the function. I'll pass x and also the exponent in. And then how can you, if I was to pass in any old x, and also give you the exponent, say, you know, 1,245, how can you make sure that you only use a very small number of pluses? How will we do it? Well, we'll have to see next week. Okay, so have a nice day. See you in the lab on Thursday.